Is it time to take some profits in FANG stocks? That's, of course, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Alphabet, or Google. Here now is Alex Kenji, the president of O'Leary Ventures. And, Alex, you work closely with Shark Tank star Kevin O'Leary, who has a yet. slew of VTFs in, in these spaces. What's your take on FANG, especially as we see this rotation out of technology stocks and into some of the other sectors of the market? I think we're going to see some volatility, quite frankly, but I wouldn't let that spook you. The reality is these stocks are really hard to get away from if you're interested in you know, staying on top of what's coming. Because these stocks are at the center of so many exciting trends, whether it's artificial intelligence, self-driving cars, streaming videos. I mean, talk about those things. Absolutely. You know, a good example would be Google, right? So they've got their core ad business, which is great, and they're being very defensive about that, doubling down on it, spinning off some assets that are non-core. But then they've also got their deep mind artificial intelligence platform. Now, that may be five or six years away from being a really meaningful component of their earnings, but boy, do you not want to be left out of that when it comes. And we had Tesla CEO Elon Musk over the weekend sort of sound the alarm on artificial intelligence, basically saying that, hey, government has to step in to kind of determine who owns this space. Well, that might be interesting. I guess that's a, a whole other conversation. But as an investor, you know, and regardless of where you land on it, what do we do about it, you know, one thing I don't want to do is not be part of that when it does come. Mm. And with regard to Netflix at a PE of over 200, mm. I mean, is there a point where investors start to say, what's next for Netflix? Because they have so many subscribers, it's hard to see where the growth comes from. Netflix is such an interesting company because on the one hand, they've really become almost a hegemon. People have barely noticed as this happened, but they've now reached the point where more people subscribe to Netflix than Comcast. Mm. And even if you look globally more, they're creeping up to the point where it's going to be more on Netflix than on kind of all cable combined. And when that happens, where do you go? But then on the other hand, yeah, a lot of it's priced in already, 200 times earnings. And so I think the question is, how much Netflix do you want to hold? Again, I wouldn't want to be left out of that stock because it is a recurring revenue. People are very addicted to it. Yeah, it does cost money to produce original content, but America has shown for decades that it can export content all over the world. So there is a lot of scalability there, at least in my view. And then it's interesting with Facebook, you actually say that because the company has no debt, they're not levered to Fed rate hikes, which I thought was pretty funny. It's true. I mean, we are in a rising rate environment. We've seen a rate hike last month. People, easy to forget, but there's at least one or two more hikes to come in the next 12 months. Meanwhile, Canada is raising rates. European Union is looking at raising rates uh, sometime in the near future. And so... To some extent, you want to ask, which of my stocks are going to be hardest hit by this? And of course, those with low or no debt, like Facebook, would be technically agnostic. Yeah, although these tech companies have so much money, it's almost like, well, who cares if the Fed raises rates? <laughs> to some extent, yeah, but as an investor, you don't want to overpay. Just because you love a company doesn't mean you love it at mm -hmm. any price, right? All right, Alex Kenji, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for coming back with us. Thank you. I'm Scott Gam, and you're watching The Street.